Today I'm going to show you how to drip feed the TNC155 controller from Heidentain. I've had a couple people ask me about how to do it and it's the biggest pain to try to explain through uh, text or anything of the sorts. I'll show you uh, step by step how to get this to communicate with a computer. To my knowledge most of the TNC uh, 150s, 151s, and 155s uh, work about the same. So I know these controllers are pretty obsolete and they're not the most fun to work with but they do work, they do their job, and I've actually made quite a few cool parts with it so it's it's pretty capable. You said it has probing features which I'm sure that technology is long gone. It just does not exist anymore. You can't buy the parts. Uh, it can do fourth axis and it can also do rigid tapping although my machine isn't outfitted with any sort of sensors that support that, so. So the first thing is to check and or change the machine parameters to make sure that the controller is set up to read and write via the serial port. Uh, the first machine parameter is machine parameter 71, characters for program end and beginning. Uh, my machine just has the recommended value, which is described earlier on in this manual. The next would be machine parameter 217, which dictates the language in which it speaks, and we're going to set that to 1 for ISO G-code, because that will be the easiest to make a configuration for in Fusion. Then there are machine parameters 218 to 222, which, to the best of my knowledge, don't do anything if the machine is set in FE mode. Uh, it's more a EXT mode thing. Uh, the next machine parameter, 223 operating mode, will be set to 1 for transfer blockwise. Then there's machine parameter 224, which again, my machine is just set to whatever the, uh, like the base value, recommended value is uh, that's described earlier on in this manual. And I will post links to the parameters that I have for my machine, as well as these manuals, just as a, a reference. The next step is rewiring this plug, which is on the back of the controller. Um, this is Heidenhain part number 214001-01. And this just goes from the controller itself inside of the housing to this DB25 plug on the back of the controller which is what the adapter cord will go to to the USB. Um, I'll show you some wiring diagrams here in a second but what I had to do in here which I already have this all torn apart uh, sorry for those that don't know how to operate a screwdriver the pin number 6 and pin number 20 were flipped around in here so I had to uh, just unscrew these, this pops off, desolder them, flip them around, and uh, everything was good to go. So it pins the little side appropriately. The only thing is pin number one, um, they labeled as a chassis ground, which should be labeled as a signal ground. The big side is labeled appropriately prior to me rewiring it. And the problem was that data terminal ready and data set ready were switched around. Here's an illustration of how it was wired prior to me rewiring it. And everything checks out besides the data set ready and data terminal ready. Because the way this works is the chassis grounds are connected, transmit goes to receive, receive comes from transmit, uh, clear to send goes to ready to send, and vice versa. And the problem here is that data set ready is an output. Data terminal ready is an input. It's not getting anything there, and these are both yelling at each other and do nothing. And then the signal ground on the bottom here is connected as well. My guess is it was either A, wired wrong, or B, they wired it like this to make it proprietary so that you had to buy their adapter cord to go from the... Uh, controller to whatever external memory source you had. So I rewired it to switch around the data set ready and data terminal ready on one side. The next step is getting the 
software on the PC called TNC Server. Um, here on Heidenhain's website, which is actually super nice that they still offer this, although it supports more than just the old outdated TNC 155, it, it supports many others. Uh, it comes as TNC Remo. So you install TNC Remo and I uninstalled all the other crap that I didn't need and just kept TNC Server. The controller, they have a bunch of them listed here. The transfer protocol needs to be FE. Then when you have the cord plugged in, you can just click find available ports. The baud rate needs to be 9600. Once you have this installed and opened, all you have to do is open it. It already knows which folder it's getting its data from and when you output information from the mill to this it outputs that information to the folder you have selected. You want a USB to DB25 cable. Uh, I'll post a link to this or you can google it on your own. Mod, arrow down, until you get to baud rate. You change the baud rate to 9600, arrow down again, the RS-232C interface, you can hit enter to change that, and you want that on FE. Go to post process, and it's going to require that you have a part or toolpath already to be able to click this. You go to open configuration, this is what we get. This is essentially telling Fusion that this toolpath, it is going to use the configuration to output it into the language that the controller understands. And there were a few things I had to change. Fusion has presets, and one of them is Heidenhain. And it's close, but it's a newer Heidenhain. And this controller, which on my mill is from 1989, is very far from new. And things had to be changed for the proprietary 1989 Heidenhain ISO code to match up to what Fusion has here. The configuration that I have is not complete. But the problem I ran into was that I was unable to find the right block to insert to provide the right dimension for Z travel to do both helical ramps and climb milling threading. So just essentially going Z down and Z up. According to Autodesk's HSM post library, it was the correct block. It wouldn't provide a vector, it would only provide a value. So it wouldn't say it's going up or down, it would just say this is how much. So I added a sign in front of it dictating that it is a downward travel in the Z motion. So it allowed me to do helical ramps because interpolating helical ramps is a boatload of code. I left climb milling internal threads as interpolated because generally the feed rates are so slow that the machine can actually carry that order out without running into the issue of there being so much code that the machine slows down because it cannot read it in fast enough for it to supply information to the servos because it's old, it's, it does that. So you've made it this far, the next step is to run the program. So I have a couple different tools here to do different features on this part. I've selected it, everyone that uses Fusion knows how to use Fusion, you know, it was post-process. And then with the configuration I currently have, if there are helical ramps, I select yes for allow helical moves. If I'm doing threading, I select no and run it as a separate program just for threading. Um, and that will change as I fix that. But right now I don't have the time or the ambition to change that because it's not enough of a pain for me to change the code. So. You get this, um, there are helical ramps, no threads, so post. So at this point, this code, this program, is in the folder that TNC server draws from. We're at program run full sequence, ext, we enter the program number, which is 1001, enter. And it reads it in, and TNC server spits it out. Here are the instructions on how to input and output machine parameters. So essentially what you do, you go mod, you go enter in 95148, which gets you to machine parameters, ext, which is external read in, read out. It will ask you external data input, and you select no enter to output parameters from machine to storage, and you hit enter 
to read in parameters from storage to control. So we go mod, so 95148 gets us two parameters, ext, external data input, no. Program number, we'll say one, enter, external data output. Now it is outputting the machine parameters right there. Some gremlin comes by, shows up, he opens this up, he unplugs this. Oh no! Your machine parameters, they're gone. All of them. Your mill's gonna start screaming at you in whatever language it defaults to, which I guarantee you is not English. You come back the next day, all eager to make parts, you turn your machine back on, and this is what you get. In my case, it screams at me in German. And now it's asking you to manually input every single machine parameter. Mod, we changed the baud rate back to 9600 because it defaults to whatever it will default to. Change this to FE. EXT. And program number, the one we just outputted, program 1. And look at that. It's reading them all in. 